All right, so we just uh, sanded, did a quick mouse sand of the chassis uh, after taking off all the stuff, of course. And we are now going to use Chinese ink uh, to stain it. Yeah? Yeah, black yep. ink. Black ink. All right, so I got this bottle of Chinese ink for calligraphy and painting and such, like, how many years ago? Many years, and Four. it's been used for lots of projects, and it's still almost 90% full. <laughs> stuff lasts forever. Yeah, it's awesome. It's also surprisingly useful for helping to get a nice black coat on Super stubborn wood. Super black. So, oh my gosh, look at that. Basically, because it's water-based, you, uh, you can wipe it on, and it'll get completely black, right? But then you kind of have to rinse off the excess. So you make it so that it's a liquid surface on the wood, and that'll soak into the wood. Unlike a like a poly finish or something like that that sits on top of the wood, mm -hmm. this actually soaks into the wood. So you get the uh, ink so that it has liquid at all the points, so it can actually soak down in and let it set for you know just a couple of minutes. And then you rinse off the excess because you don't want any moisture to reactivate the ink and make it flow again because the stuff, if it gets wet, it just runs. Yep. So you want to just have the ink that's actually soaked down in and not the ink <laughs> that's sitting on the top that's dried, right? And it's really easy cleanup too because it washes right off your hands because it's um, is water soluble, very, very, very soluble. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, it, uh, <laughs> it makes it really black. So pine doesn't take paint very well, so we wanted to, uh, before we painted it, give it a nice undercoat of black with the ink, so the wood itself is actually an even black. As close as we can get with ink, anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, after sanding it, um, and then putting the, the Chinese paint on, yep, yeah. then we sanded it again, but this time with Scotch Bright. Scotch Bright, and then uh, we used steel wool, triple lot, triple lot to finish it up. Then we used feed and wax, and uh, just put a coat of it on, and uh, look at that. And. The process is nice because in some spots it gets worn through a little bit when you're doing it. So it gets like that just sort of worn look, which is perfect if you're trying to go into a uh, an older radio or something like that because it looks like it was manufactured in the 30s. Mm -hmm. so you can see the ink marks and the little, you know, worn off bits here and there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all less than perfect, which is exactly what we want. Yep. So what's next up after this? Uh, I think the next thing we need to do is grill cloth that goes in front of the speaker. All right, so for this section, we're gonna put the grill cloth on, but we're actually gonna use uh, burlap instead of speaker grill cloth. And I got that from online fabric okay, store. done. <laughs> okay, well, not quite. <laughs> so we have um, a couple materials here. We have spray adhesive right there. And then we have a staple gun. 45. Or staple. General purpose 45. Yep. And Stanley. Yep. And uh, there's a special way of putting on the fabric, right? Yeah, because we have to have this hole open right here, we don't have any staple tension between the bottom and the top. And I don't want to put staples here because I have future plans. So what we're going to do instead is uh, use the spray adhesive on the whole surface to um, uh, hold it around all of the edges. Mm -hmm. And that'll set up in a few minutes after we put this on and to get it tensioned so that there's no wrinkles and stuff over where the speaker grill is visible through the, the front of the radio. We'll be using this to tension it across. So We'll be putting a temporary couple of staples down in this region, mm -hmm. but then once the glue is all set up, we'll actually be able to cut this section out so our electronics can come through and get to the holes in the front of the radio. Okay. That's the plan, 
it's yep. going to be tricky. So we're going to have to do it with all four hands off camera. So. Yep. So we'll show you guys how it looks afterwards. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have put the spray adhesive on and then uh, we put the cloth on top, stapled the top and the bottom, and then pretty much pulled like we were, had said before and then stapled that into place. And so for now we've got a nice little circumference of staples and we're letting the glue set. Um, most of this excess will be trimmed off, so uh, we'll get to that once it's finished setting. That I really like these pair of scissors. They're nice. <laughs> They're clean cut. Yeah, they are. That doesn't mean they just do clean cuts. They do, but they're actually called clean. Are they? Yeah. Look at the side of them. Westcott clean cut. Wow, they're really called that. These are like the great scissors that they used to get oh, yeah. in like third grade after you passed the the safety scissors. You know, Sharps. With the with the crap corners. It was like deliberately blunt. Just Daddy and I cut themselves. both right, left-handed, but we both use scissors right-handed. So yeah. I'm sure we both had problems in preschool and kindergarten with our teachers giving us left-handed scissors and wondering why worst. our cuts were crappy. They're just the worst. They were blunt. They're terrible. Like I think they deliberately made them blunt, just so lefties would turn into righties. Anyway, look at this. Bam! Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, uh, how are the kids doing? Yeah? Yeah, I, I, uh, had one of your boys in here earlier this week. Uh, he was looking a little shaggy, so we gave him a trim. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh my gosh, did you see Stella's new hair color? It's a uh, uh, chromatic blue. <laughs> it's great. Well, just a little around the ears here. Okay. <laughs> Toy Makers Barbershop, everyone. <laughs> Or to be a salon whisker. Salon. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a Toy Maker's Barber Shop, it'd be like, so, uh, I've been working on a new way to tie some flies. But this is, this is more of a long flowing hair look, so. I see. <laughs> What kind of uh, products do you use? A uh, little uh, 3M general <laughs> purpose 45 spray adhesive. <laughs> That's new this week. <laughs> Top of the line? <laughs> Something. <laughs> left-handed scissors when you're little. You're not a complete dunce with them as an adult. Most people couldn't do this with the wrong hand. Probably because it'd feel weird. Yep, yep. 
Yep, yep. What do you think? Does it pass the mirror inspection? I'm more interested to see if it passes the gets into the case without getting stuck inspection. Well, we gotta do that soon. Fly away there, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, we did a dry fit just to make sure that uh, everything would fit in okay. And now we're gonna take a look and see what it looks like from the front. Bum, 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 boo boo. I rather like it. What do you think? It's interesting. The debate is currently, you know, there's this piece of cardboard that's got, you know, the ribs on it. Yeah. Um, uh, potentially making it another one of these and putting the burlap on it mm -hmm. and mounting that behind here mm -hmm. up tight. Um, but I don't know. That's kind of, kind of neat looking. Kind of nice. It'll look a little bit different when there's a speaker mounted in there because that'll be black and it'll also be black behind. So yep. it'll be a little bit more even. We'll just see. We'll, we'll see. Okay. Now time to put in the stuffs, the goods, the innards. Yeah, I've been working on um, putting a new coat of wax on everything. Um, it's nice so and shiny. Is looking good again. Yep. I restored the speaker and it was pretty pretty nasty when I started. Yeah. But now it looks like it's new. Almost new, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's mount some stuff up. A lot of you guys might be wondering why this thing looks so unique and, and like Dr. Seuss designed it. <laughs> the reason is because this amplifier is wider than the space we had to work with. Mm -hmm. So we had to allow a place for it to sit. So that's why we cut out these areas. Um, so basically what I have to do to get this thing together is that goes through there and then I'm gonna pick up the amp without touching any capacitors. <laughs> Probably a good idea. And set it down on that corner and then this corner can drop down and then it can slide underneath here. And then we line it up on its mounting holes and do that. And obviously we have to do this one before we can do the speaker because if the speaker were in place, you wouldn't be able to put it in place. So it's, it's a three dimensional puzzle. Just yep. kind of wanted to share. like a glove. What do you think? Yep, I like it. Still got a long ways to go though. I need knobs and um, jack. Yep. All that sort of stuff. We're gonna have to do something with the the little old speaker mounting holes. The, the original speaker was only that big. Mm -hmm. New speaker's that big. <laughs> but yeah, I'm liking it so far. Huh. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe. And follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.